as we are privileged to be here this evening, I reiterate once again, let me say to our Lord, esteemed bandits that are here, a humble seater, to all you loving devotees of Bhagwan, my humble pronoun to each and every one of you. We are at nine already, and I will just take a few more minutes of your time so that we can have Prabhupada in this afternoon. We are privileged to be celebrating something that is not celebrated or not vice in many ways today. We hear about Bhagavan Sri Ram often and we hear about so many other avatars of God. But today we are privileged to look at a person that would have moved from majesty to simplicity to supremacy. That Supreme Mother that we worship today was born or took Avatar into the world where she was placed in the kingdom of kingsmanship. That's majesty. She had gotten married into royalty. She went to the kingdom of Dasharat. She stood sincerely as a Pati Vrata and went with the husband to the forest. Immediately a transition, immediate transition from everything that she enjoyed, luxurious, to the simple life of the forest. That is simplicity. It did not affect her, her relationship. It did not affect in her relationship. And in the conclusion of Ram Charitamanas, she gained supremacy because she went back into Mother Earth. She was received personally by the Supreme Mother of the Earth. And when we look at, these are just few qualities of the Supreme Mother. And when we look at her, how she would have lived and the way she would have acted so that you and I can have a better tomorrow, we may left amazed. We may left amazed. We cannot discuss every of her action and activity in a few minutes. But what we will try to do is to understand how she came, why she came, and probably one of the aspects of her life. And with that, we get into our provision as we bow our heads to our room. Om Akanda Vandala Kadam Vyaptum Yena Chara Charam Tatpadam Darsitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Prems Bodhi Sri Sat Guru Maharaj Ki Chai It is said that in ancient India that the sages and saints they lived their life very happily, very peacefully but with the tyranny of Ravana stretching far and wide he transcended his bond and he started or he intended that he should be collecting taxes also from the sages and saints. So what he did was to send his henchmen and requested that the sages and saints they paid to him taxes. How do we pay taxes if we do not work? The sages and saints they did not have a job what they did was praise to God, and out of that, they were appreciated and they were given that which is called alms. It causes them much unease and discomfort, and as such, they decided that they're going to give that which is due to Ravana. It is said that extracted from their body were their own blood. 
that was placed in a goblet and was covered very nicely and was delivered to the henchmen of Ravana and said, take this to your king and master and tell him that this will bring famine and destruction to his land. This is what he wants. We cannot afford to pay him in any other way. We are paying him with our own blood, which will be his downfall. The soldiers of Ravana took that goblet along with the message to Ravana and they carry it to him and it is said that he received the goblet with joy because he was now having taxes from the sages and saints but when he received the message along with the goblet he was pretty much sad because he knew the words of the sages and saints were not false they were not false to get rid of his problems he directed his servants, his soldiers, to bury it in the land of Mithila or in the kingdom of Janak. Because this is my problem, if it goes into Janak land, it doesn't really matter if Janak suffered. And that's the way the world of Ravan think. That's the way the Ravan in our world think. I don't care about the other person. If I cause a problem and I can get out of it, you respect of what happens to the other person. It doesn't really matter to me. So what happened was that the goblet was buried in the land of Mithila. It is said that, remember the words of the sages and saints, they were not false. And famine and destruction started to befall the land of Janak. It is said that Janak went to his priests, and as such his priests instructed him that he must do ritual to the earth. In summary, he did the ritual, and the ritual was that he had to plow the soil. It is symbolic of taking that which is stagnated or stagnant aspect of life or the unwanted topsoil and mix or bring about that which is progressive. And that is what mulching and or plowing is. Isn't that what we do? We remove the topsoil that is actually washed away of all nutrients and we bring about that which is progressive. That is what people do in their lives when they turn to God. That which stagnates them, that which actually deprives them from the happiness is removed by the plowing of mantras and prayers and bhajans in our lives. And he was symbolically plowing the land of Mithila when it is said that the harrow struck the goblet that was there. It is said that out of the goblet came a child. And that child was very beautiful. They said that the poor of the child was overwhelmed with the presence of the three devis, Ad Shakti Mahadurgema, Saraswati Devi, Lakshmi Devi. And that child was taken into custody by Janak and his wife. Naraji was called to present a name for the child, and because it is said the child was uncovered by the arrow, which is Sita. The child was called Sita. Because Dasharat was called Vidha, the Devi was called Vidhi. Janak, pardon me. Because he was Janak, the child was called Janaki. Because the land was Mithila, the Devi was called Mithili. These are some of the names that were given to Sita or by that Sita is called by. The child grew up to be a wonderful child and all good qualities were seen. It is said that during the process of her playtime, she would have done something that caused Janak to cause a swayamber to take place when her time for marriage would have been. 
She did a number of wonderful things as a child in her life. But one of the important things is that when this Swayamber was going to take place, Bhagwan Sri Ram was also invited there. And Sita Ji had the opportunity to have a sight of Bhagwan Sri Ram through information of her friends. And it is said that this is what happened. This very chaupai we are going to take for tonight only because there are so many things that can be said and there is only little time that can be done. And this is what it is said here in Ramin. So Siddhas, you will read them. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Tosidasji would have actually used to describe these two brothers. It says that Raghu Simha, the lions, the lions of the house of the Raghu or the Kul of the Raghu. And that is the way 
He did not see them like animal, but physically they were presentable. They were masculine. They were majestic. And that's the way she saw them. It is said that it continues to say, Nakasika Deke Rama Kishowa. And when we look at the person, when we look at the person, I said, May watch your head to toe. Isn't that so? May God look at your head to toe. In this aspect, not sick, toe to head. When you're looking at something, you look at the foundation before you look at the top of it. That's what it symbolizes. You don't look at the fancy structure on top without any foundation at the bottom. And whether it's any other thing, especially our lives, especially our lives, when we look at our lives, we should be looking at the foundation that we build in our lives before we can look at what we want to be on top there. If we try to get on top here without any foundation at the bottom, I'm sure we don't have jet propellers. We're going to fall. We're going to find difficulty. We're going to find troubles in our life. It is said, Sitaji Nakasikadeki Ramakishoba. She looked at Bhagawan Sri Ram looking from feet up to head. And as she did that, Sumiro Pitupana Manuati Chowa. At that very moment, she remembered that you know what? My dad said only he who broke the bow is going to be my husband. So she was in a dilemma. On one hand was the person, the perfect individual that she wants to marry. And on the other hand was his father promise that she had to upkeep. Those challenges beat us every day in life. Those challenges beat us every day in life. Whether we use our intelligence to battle it or we go with our mind and we get lost. When we can allow for the intelligence to take dominance over the mind, we can never go wrong. Sita Ji, what she did, she was there and then reminded by herself that I have left this morning to do puja and I'll let that be up to my, uh, my Supreme Mother. She left there and then and she went to Girdajama temple. And when she got to the temple, it is said that she held down to the murti and she started to pray. And she prayed as she said, Jaya Jaya Giri Raja Kishoda Jaya Mahesha Mukha Chanda Chakoda Jaya Gaja Bandana Sanarukamata Jagata Janani Damini Dutagata That glory unto you, O Mother, whom is the delight of Bhagavan Shiva, who is the mother of the elephant headed Ganesha and the six faced Kartikeya. To you, I prostrate myself. To you, I prostrate myself. My friend, I'm not telling you to go and take all your problems and put it before God and do nothing and it's going to help you. This is simply telling us that when we are faced with troubles, trials, and tribulations in our lives, we turn to the best source, to the best source of information to solve our problems. I'm not saying to abandon God. Gandhi Ji said that prayers not back without with action is futile. As much as we pray, we have to work to take our problems and difficulty away. God help those who help themselves. It is said that Sita Ji did not allow to be carried away by her friends or the nice words that was presented to her. What she did was that she allowed for higher intelligence to take dominance. And the highest intelligence we can find in this world is God, our scripture. It is said that Sita Devi went to God and she answered her prayers. Sita Devi prayers were answered 
and all of us understood, all of us understood that Bhagwan Sri Ram would have won her in the Shwaipar. I'm I am summarizing this so that we can go with time. My friends, our problems and difficulty may, might be very huge, but with Sita Devi, she shows us how to be a mother, how to be a daughter-in-law, how to be a daughter, how to be a wife, how she could take care of her in-laws. That's a problem we have today. Parents and in-laws are back doors to children at certain time. But that's here, here alone, home where I come from too. Oh, I'm not going to live with them. I don't want them to visit me because they're going to take my time away. Sita Devi allows us to understand all these. And most of all, and principally, she allows us to understand Pati Vrita Dharma. One of the biggest things that a female who is married, if practice, if practice is guaranteed to win salvation in this lifetime, is guaranteed. And she is giving us the guarantee. Because she says that you are the foremost, you are the oh mother, you rank the foremost above all women that are there in the world. And that's the guarantee we have. You and I are given this privilege opportunity to understand what she represents. Let us not just listen to it, but if we can actually put some of it into our lives. Get up tomorrow morning, our lives start being better. Get up tomorrow morning, our lives start being better. This evening, we're going to pause here and we are going to sing praises of the mothers, the Durga, the Devi Stuti for one primary reason, it was brought to my attention that a devotee of this mother some time back, she was a devotee of this mother, she used to come to this mother. She is at this point in time very sick. So what are we going to do with the same confidence that Sitaji would have practiced puja with? All of us are going to join with the same confidence in reciting the Devi Stuti. And it's very simple, you just have to hymn the verses. And we start singing. Sadaje, Sadaje, Sadaje Bhavani, Sadaje, Sadaje, Sadaje Bhavani, Sadaje, Sadaje.